This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Do you ever walk into an art store and say, what the heck is that? I need to try it. Well, that is exactly what happened to me today. We are trying out this 15 color crayon thing. What kind of art can I create with this crazy 15 color crayon? Will I go abstract? Will I adapt my current art style to it? Who knows? We are just going to play around with this giant crayon and see what we can make. Before I get into it, let's just take a peek at the box here. It says create colorful shapes, stripes, and squiggles without ever changing crayons, which I don't think it's necessarily something that I want to trade for the convenience, if you could even call it that, of having to change your crayon. But here we are, let's take a peek at this giant 15 color crayon. Now I am really uh, concerned, I guess, at how I'm going to use this big fat boy as we use it. We're not going to have that sharp edge anymore. Will I sharpen it? Who knows? But I do wanna go ahead and swatch this big bad boy. So let's get our piece of paper here and let's just see what it looks like. And I do wonder if we can find each color. So we start off with this neon yellow and we're getting these little swooshes of purple and pink and now we're getting swooshes of blue and orange. Ooh, I mean this is actually really interesting. I had no idea what to expect going into this. Here is a nice little dissection I suppose of what we're looking for. I do have to wonder if we can get some sort of cool abstract yet still illustrated uh, effect with this crayon. I mean, this is pretty cool. I bet you can get a nice uh, Northern Lights effect or just a really cool, this looks like almost grass in a field that has different colors, but we haven't gotten any blues. Let's see if we can get some blues in here. We've got blue and orange, some green peeking in. Oh, now we're going just straight orange. Oh, now we're getting some purple. <laughs> I do love the unpredictability of this giant crayon. I mean, this is pretty much just yellow. Oh, nope. Now we're getting hints of purple. I almost want to draw another unicorn for Junicorn because unicorns are usually pretty mysterious and colorful. So maybe we can do some unicorns. Maybe we can do some Northern Lights. Maybe some magic? I'm really not sure. It's just really interesting. I don't know what to expect. There's 15 colors in here. Can I dissect every color? Oh geez. What's with this seafoam green? Can we get some of the seafoam in here? Here's an idea. Let's get a new swatching page and see how long we can write for and how many colors we can get. So I'm just gonna make one long line back and forth on the page. Hi, I'm an artist and this is what I do for a living. I swatch giant 15 color crayons to see if we can get a hint of all 15 colors. And honestly, I'm not feeling very confident that we're going to get, oh gosh, all 15. We seem to be stuck in a purple pink rut here. Ooh, if you get a swirling effect, you can get some nice colors. So whenever I play with art supplies, that reminds me of being a child again. It just makes me want to do really loose, fun, silly doodles that have no pressure and basically just try to have fun with art like when I was a kid again. One day this piece is going to be in an art museum worth $5 million and we're all going to be asking ourselves, why? Between our grassy fields and our line art, I think the grassy fields are very inspirational when it comes to the color changing and unpredictability of this crayon. So line work, you were interesting and fun to doodle with, but I think this will be a really fun effect to maybe make some sort of magical landscape with with a horse or unicorn or just really embrace how colorful and unpredictable this material is. So here we go. Let's get to sketching, penciling, and then playing around with this very strange art supplies.
The three pieces that I'm working on this video are basically just experimental pieces playing around with this crayon and seeing what maybe works best. I think my quick doodly sketches are actually probably my favorite thing to come out of today's video. I think the sloppiness and the quickness and goofiness of the sketches is just really fun. Like I said, this art supply really just brought me back to my childhood and I think having that loose fun playfulness to it was really what brought this art supply out but we are trying to work on creating a quote unquote actual piece of art or illustration really fun to make a series of illustrations again based off of shapes I really enjoy these shaped sort of framed illustrations so I have one for a square a circle a triangle I thought the square one would be fun to make unicorns but I forgot the horns into this really nice uh, magical field of grass we have a circle based off of well originally it was going to be an ocean but after I put the eyes on these mountains and then made them pure black, I thought it would actually be really fun to play around with maybe an oil spill in the ocean since oil is black and also very rainbowy and shiny. So maybe I'll try to make some sort of mountains and creatures, but then also put some black here and there to make it look like an oil spill. And then our triangle, we have a mysterious woods illustration with some sort of glowing mysterious creature. So there are our three sketches ideas. I'll probably end up changing these a little bit as I work on them. But with that out of the way, let's get to working on our three pieces. Starting off with our square piece with our unicorns. This one I was a little nervous about because I really wasn't sure how the crayon was going to layer with the colored grass. But before we get into that, let's talk about the concept of this piece. So going into this horse magical colorful field, I approached this set of illustrations really similar to how I approach Inktober or Huevember. I really focus on a black and white illustration, but then have this really fun pop of color that is added to it so I really wanted the focus to be on the colorful aspects of this illustration while having the ink work and the white and black of the page as a sort of secondary support group for our main focus. So when I first started lining this piece, I was using an 05 micron, but then I decided that using a 1 micron would probably make for a more bold and loose line work, which is mostly true. But also the fact that this crayon was so big and fat, it was really hard to get into small cracks and crevices of line work. So I figured by having a thicker line work, it was going to be a lot easier to stay within the lines, but also wasn't that concerned. I was going for a fun and messy look. So that is what I went for. And after we had our horses inked and ready to go, it was time to add our 15 colored giant crayon grass. And I was really excited to add the grass because I wanted to see how the piece came together. So far, we just had some white horses in a field of basically nothing. And I was really depending on these crayons crazy colors to really bring this piece to life, basically. I think it turned out really fun. There's definitely an aspect of magical unicorn pastel colorness to this piece for sure, but I'm just not sure that it really layered well, especially because all of the colors are very pastel-y, or at least all the colors that I was able to reach. So even though there is a lot of separation with the colors, as far as contrast goes, there's just not a lot happening for it but it is a lot of fun this piece is it's definitely colorful there's definitely that unicorn magical vibe to it and just to add a little bit extra dimension i added some hatching just to add that extra gray scale to it because just having white and black was looking a little too too flat for me so having the gray aspects of the horse's hair and some shadows here and there really added just a little something extra to it and there is our first magical unicorn piece Thank you. 
Moving on to our second piece, we have what I originally explained as our mountains in an ocean, but then I also wanted there to be creatures in an ocean. But then I also thought it would be cool to use the black of our pen and the rainbow colored crayon to create an oil spill effect. I think in the end, this piece turned out to be a mashup of all three of those. So we do have creatures coming out of an ocean, but they also kind of look like oil spill but also they're as large as mountains. So in the end, I kind of mashed all three ideas together, resulting in a very simple yet I think fun and playful illustration that turned out really well in contrast. Use of materials turned out really great. The technique of my hatching I think really benefited the clouds. I think overall a lot of really good things happened in this piece and it just turned out to be really good. So obviously I started off by inking in our blobby oil creatures. They're just blobs of black ink. Honestly, there's literally nothing special about this illustration, but I think something about how simple it is just really appeals to me. After our creatures were inked, it was time to move on to the sky, which was going to be a lot of hatching because I really wanted to focus on getting that grayscale sort of separation between our black inky figures, but also still having the white clouds pop off of the background. So in order to get this really nice soft cloud look, I didn't want to put a hard line around the clouds. So instead I penciled the clouds in and then used our hatching around the clouds to create this lineless cloud look that made them look so fluffy and soft. So the combination of the hatching sky with the overlapping clouds over our black inky figures, I just think the overall contrast in this illustration really helped pull it all together. But I will say I think half of the time it took to create these illustrations was dedicated to the hatching because oh man, it takes so long to do the hatching. You have to make sure that the ruler is straight and that you're spacing them apart exactly right. And even though my hatching isn't perfect, I think it's always really worth the time and effort because it always just, it looks so good. Something about it really speaks to me. I don't know. Let's talk about our crayon aspect. So once all of our line work was done, it was time to add our pop of color, our giant 15 color crayon, you know, the whole point of this video. And I have to say, this is probably where the crayon worked the best. Because I was covering such a large area, the crayon had more space to blend out the colors and work between each color. And it was also just a bigger, blanker area for the colors to spread out and not only have their own section of color, but blend into each other a little better. So so although I did want the separation on the horse one for the different layers of grass, I think maybe having them blend together is really what helps this gimmicky crayon work the best. Also I added a strip of color underneath the clouds just to show that reflection of light from the ocean and I think that really brought it all together. Am I hyping up this simple illustration way too much? Yes I am. For our third and final piece, working with our colorful crayon, we have our triangle framed illustration of a mysterious creature glowing in the woods. This was a piece I really wasn't sure how to approach because I was depending so heavily on the black ink of the pen to create a place for the crayon to go. I really had to think about it. Obviously the crayon doesn't layer so well on top of a black pen so I had to put the pen work down first and really think about where I was going to be putting those colorful shines. So we have another very simple illustration because I was just really focusing on having the block of color be the focus and I don't know, like I said, this, this gimmicky colorful crayon just really made me want to create silly, fun, simple illustrations that kind of brought back my childhood. Both this illustration and the horse illustration gave me very strong coloring book vibes, probably because I was using such thick line art and there was so much white space and I was scribbling in color. I just, I felt like a kid again working on this video. Just a very simple idea, a little self-indulgent. But anyways, let's talk about this piece. 
So because there was going to be so much black ink work around the trees to create that darkness to make the trees pop off of the black, I was going to have to do some hatch work on the grass to separate it from the other elements. Thankfully, it was a very small hatching area, so it didn't take too long. What I really struggled with, but I enjoyed, was creating those black sort of action-y shine marks around our character. It was just really hard to maneuver around the trees and still try to to create this fluid line of action around our character. But we pushed through it, we did it. Of course, my favorite part of this illustration is the birch tree stripes. I think my most favorite tree type to illustrate ever is a birch tree. I just have a lot of fun creating those black marks on them. It's just fun to do randomized marks. I don't know why, it's just fun. So after our pen work was complete, it was time to add our colorful crayon explosion, which didn't really turn out as fun as the sketch. I think the sketch was just a lot more loose and free and fun, and there was just a little bit too much restriction, I think, on this illustration. That being said, I still think it turned out really fun, and that is all three of our 15 color crayon illustrations. you guys enjoyed this chill, fun, sort of self-indulgent, bringing back my childhood art illustration video. You know what else has more colors than you can count? And by colors, I mean amazing features crammed into a website? Squarespace. Yes, that sentence made sense. Whether you're trying to make a living off of your craft or simply display it for the world to see, Squarespace makes it easy. From automatic image scaling to easy importing, you can have a website up and going in no time. Seriously, how long do you think it took me to make this one. Maybe five minutes. It's that easy. And it's cute. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Casey Golden to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. Stay golden. Bye.